Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got quite an upsetting dream I want to bring to you um, from one of the sisters in Christ that's on the Grafted in Team Jesus ministry. Her name is Jennifer. And obviously this takes place after the Bride of Christ leaves. And this is what people in the tribulation the greater tribulation we're in tribulation now obviously but uh, if you're in the great tribulation before the wrath of God now after the multitude too large to number leaves becomes the wrath of God okay hope you understand that all right I don't know that I can put this picture up maybe uh, no uh, it's the, the venom, the abomination of desolation, and the mark of the beast. This is what is going to happen to people. She has dreams from the Lord, y'all. I can vouch for that. I've, we've shared many of her dreams, broke them down. We know what they mean, and it's everybody confirms in their spirit that this one said, yep, that's what I thought too, and that's what I was getting to, and looking up numbers and strongs that she, when she dreams of numbers I was in one of her dreams I said something about 168 I think it was and they looked up the number 168 it was the number confirmed what the dream was about it was just amazing okay so let me share this one this is what you have to face if you're left behind okay so I want you to be ready share this with anybody you know that you think might not be going in the first fruits departure she received this on november 10th today is saturday november the 13th and it looks like 3 45 it all started with this it was early evening and i was in a house making sure all the doors were locked and the windows were shut i had the tv on so by this time, the three days of darkness has passed, obviously. TV's on and a light in the kitchen area. So the lights are back on. Suddenly I heard banging and I looked and saw a, quote, creature person, unquote, trying to break into the house. That's probably, Kathy probably put it in quotes because she types this up for the website. And that's probably exactly what Jennifer called it, a creature person trying to break into the house. I then heard noise coming from the bedroom and I looked in there to see another creature person trying to come through a window that had been left open. I grasped, I grasped a handgun from a dresser drawer and shot. This creature falls back, shot in the head. I heard knocking at the door and a man outside tells me to come with him because I was in danger. And there are more of these creature people coming. He sees I have a handgun and he tells me to continue to kill them by shooting these things in the head. We ran across the road together to a neighbor's house. Next scene. I was alone by the time I got across the road. That tells me an angel helped her or one of us. Coming back in our glorified bodies, we will be able to help people get to safety and be able to disappear to go to another place to help. Great exploits we will do. So it could have been one of us, it could have been an angel. But it, it, to her in the dream, it was a man. All right, angels don't always appear looking all bright white, light lit up and with the wings. They look like people. The Word of God says, uh, be careful lest you find yourself entertaining angels. You know, like when strangers are around. I, it's, that's not exactly how it's quoted, but that's real close. All right, next scene. I was alone by the time I got across the road. There was a car full of men across the road, but I know they are not normal people. Then parentheses, the, the same creature people. 
post parentheses. So these people, she sees she sees a car full of men across the road, and she knows they're creature people. These men have an intoxicated look in their eyes and movements, but they do not talk. I see another car with a woman in it and a girl about 11 in her nightgown and no shoes. In parentheses, she puts both of them look normal, close parentheses, period. The girl is sitting in the open trunk of the car. In the trunk? That was odd. I grasped the girl by the hand and put her quickly in the back seat of the car. The woman is driving, but a man got in the driver's seat when the woman moved over. They say, no, there is no room to me. But I get in the back seat with the, with the girl. Anyway, just as the man is backing up. There was another man that wanted to enter the car, but he was left behind with the creature people. It was terrible. Ne yeah, people are going to have a hard time trusting each other. Next scene. We came to a hospital, and there were different people there, some of them hospital workers who were trying to secure this part of the hospital. I was helping a woman lock the doors to this unit we were held up in. We also were putting paper and taping it over the glass as we knew by now that the creature people were drawn to light, loud noises, and you had to kill them by shooting them in the head or if you had a long stick by poking their eyes out. Hello, Jasper. Oh. I love you, baby. He was laying in his little bed right there just looking at me. I think he was. <laughs> it looked like he was. While we were covering the glass, several of the creature people in the hall outside started trying to come in. And so we start, started at that point having to kill them. Somehow a couple got in the unit where we were at and we had to get rid of them also. Then a baby had died naturally. Had died naturally. But was born to a creature woman. And we had to gouge its eyes out before it came back as a creature person. And that was very upsetting. This is where I woke up upset from the dream. Alright, so... Is this exactly how it's going to be? I'm not sure. The point is, these creature people are going to be a result of people who have taken the snake venom. And they will change. Their DNA is changing already. It will continue to change. The more boosters they get, it will change even more. And they will become like, like these zombies. They won't look normal. People who are are still totally intact and fully human will be able to recognize that they are different. They, if possible, have a gun. Plenty of bullets. Um, keep everything locked. Windows closed. Don't ever let them be open. You need to have on hand what you can have on hand and trust in the Lord to lead you out. To send somebody to lead you out if that's what's going to be necessary. Trust him to provide for food. Trust him to provide everything. And to make your bullets last as will be needed. This will not be murder, people. These people are not a person that you need to worry about murdering. Do you follow me? And the babies born to them are like Nephilim. Like when Jesus ordered, or Father, when God commanded the Israelites to go into Canaan and kill everything. Men, women, children, infants, old people, all their animals. Because they were disgusting with bestiality. Who knows what kind of animals they were dealing with. 
And they were not allowed, in some cities, they were not allowed to take any of the loot because it was tainted. There were probably demons living in some of it. So Jesus' father didn't want them taking any of the stuff and bringing it into their camp. And when they did, they got punished for it. When they spared the leader and they spared some children or whatever, they spared some people in one, one city. Uh, my memory fails me now which one. Like after the first or second time of doing that, they spared some people, took some stuff, and they got in trouble for it. Okay, so this is why they're part uh, fallen angel. Okay? They're not fully human just the Bible says just as in the days of Noah so shall it be in the coming of the son of man what was going on in the days of Noah the daughters the sons of God had taken daughters and daughters of man and took for themselves wives from the daughters of men and they procreated and they had children that were called Nephilim and they became mighty men of renown or giants okay they were bigger back then and the giants were even bigger because they were part angelic okay the angels are big they can make yourself look smaller but they are God created them bigger like 16 20 24 feet high and bigger okay so keep that in mind um, so, as far as, uh, will poking their eyes out work? The Lord will let you know. You, you stay in prayer. You ask the Lord, what do I need to defend myself? He will reveal it to you. You will find out. But be, be prepared for this kind of thing. You're supposed to be prepared spiritually first, physically second. And then with defending yourself goes with the physical, okay? All right, I'm going to end this here. Uh, I hope this wasn't too disturbing, but, you know, hey, I'd rather be told this stuff. If I thought I was going to be left behind, I'd, I'd want to know everything I could know beforehand. And you trust God and His Holy Spirit revealed to you. My glasses are crooked again. I need to have them adjusted. I actually need all brand. I wonder about getting new ones. I wonder if they could help. I just can't have the surgery. I just can't. I, I can't do it on my own. I have a dog. You can't bend over for so many days. How do you take a dog out three times a day and not bend over to pick up after him? I just can't do it. I can't do it. So please keep me in your prayers that the Lord will... Allow me to either get new glasses if he detains any longer past this full blood moon that we're going to have. It's, it's really a partial, but it's like 99%, 97%. It's almost a full blood moon this week on the 18th. And the, see the eclipse makes it look like a blood moon. It's, it's a, a prenumbral, prenumbral eclipse. The 18th is huge. We're in a huge watch week, people. The 18th into the 19th, okay? And, guess what? Independent living here. Four floors of people are having a potluck dinner on the 18th. Yes, and this I'm making an exception. I'm going to sit with my friend and my two neighbors who are both dying of cancer. And, um... I'm going to microwave some frozen corn. And bake a frozen pumpkin pie. And I'm going to try to make coffee for people. Just because. You know this is. Their only life. This is it. When they're gone they're gone. They don't have to look forward to. What we have to look forward to. And I should not care. Apparently I'm not supposed to care. But I do. I can't help it. So I don't normally associate with them, but this day I will. And if I get to disappear right in front of them, it's all the better. Glory be to God. They'll know I was telling them the truth. 
that I wasn't a liar or just a crazy person talking about the rapture and Jesus is coming. Stuff they didn't want to hear or believe. Anyway, I'll end it there. I've talked long enough. Y'all be blessed this day. God bless each and every single one of you. I cannot wait to meet you. I can't wait for that great big hug fest. Jesus first. And then every one of you gets a great big hug. I can't wait. Okay. We have much to look forward to. So keep looking up. Because our redemption draws nigher and nigher. Every day that passes by her. <laughs> okay, that was cheesy. Bye, y'all.